Okay, you guys, you know the drill with your scrap piece of paper, but today, instead of a pen, I would like you to find a colored pencil. So run around the house and find anything that is a darker shade. It can be navy blue, purple, green, brown, black, it doesn't matter. As long as it's a darker shade, quality also does not matter. Um, what I want us to do today is work with a very light hand so that we're just laying down some um, a little bit of, of uh, color and then we can go back in and add more layers on top to have different values of shading. That's what I, I want us to do today. So um, I hope you're all set and ready to go. <laughs> because I'm not. Oh man, what have I got us into? So uh, I I chose a profile because, uh, gosh, a full-on headshot would be way too complicated with the symmetry with the eyes and, and uh, oh man, too much. This is going to be, you know, challenging enough. So um, obviously with a, a subject like this, proportions are going to be a lot more important than they are with a bird. Because with a bird, um, uh, proportions matter, but the birds themselves change so much depending on the conditions that if our proportions are distorted, it doesn't really matter because chances are the bird has looked like that sometime in its life. For example, if you think about a cardinal, when they're molting, they look horrible, like a skinny little chicken. But a cardinal sitting on a branch in the winter time when it's cold outside is huge and puffy. It looks like a little red ball with a tail. So the, this type of variation, this degree of variation in the appearance of a bird is, is something that is um, <laughs> beneficial to us. <laughs> because like when we do our sketch and our proportions are out, it's like, oh, well, so what? You know, like it's cold, it's the bird's wet, who cares, right? But when we have something like this, if we screw up our proportions on uh, something like this, it's going to be very, very obvious. So what, what I would like us to try doing, or what, I, what I'm going to do, is rather than get myself in a hot mess by trying to do, you know, an outline that is, you know, this line around that is properly proportioned with the wedge of the muzzle and the, the depth of the head and the distance. Oh my God, way too many um, opportunities for needing an eraser, which we're not allowed to use. Um, what I want to do is work through the reference photo from one side to the other, okay? So that's the way I want to tackle it. And we'll just see if it makes it a little bit easier for us to handle. The other thing, as usual, is we have to have a really good understanding of what we're looking at. So it's hard for you guys to tell with the reference photo, but um, and we, Ivan and I don't have a dog, so, and we've, we've never had dogs. I'm not, you know, really, really familiar with their anatomy. Um, but my parents had a little black lab. This is, you know, similar. And, um, okay, just, blah, blah, blah. see, I'm, I'm nervous and I'm delaying, but, what you you probably can't tell from the reference photo see this really big dark patch here and there's another dark patch here so in when i look at this photo on my computer and it's so much bigger and i can see more detail this is actually the ear canal okay so if you think of a german shepherd with their ears that stand up at the bottom of that upright ear is the ear canal. This is what that is, okay? So this is this is a cartilage covered with fur. And with this particular dog, 
that that ear canal is exposed only on the sides because the flap of the ear, which is this, is folded down and over. So uh, what we used to do with my parents' little black legs, pick her, her little ears up and, and have them pointed and I'm sure she hated it. Anyway, so that's, that's what's going on here. This is not shadow at all. This is the, the ear canal. Underneath here, this is shadow where the ear is casting um, a shadow along the neck. There is the tissue for the bottom lip and we got the muzzle. This is the nostril and the canal, okay? So other than that, um, let's just give it a go and see what happens. When you choose a starting spot on your paper, um, depending on the size that you tend to draw, start over on, on, give yourself lots of space in case you end up traveling too much the other side. So I hope you've got your colored pencil now. And um, this one has been used a little bit for shading. So I've already got a flat um, edge, which I'm going to maintain by not rotating my colored pencil in my hand. I want to do most of the work with this flat edge. So if we try very carefully at the nose, just to, and I, I think if this is the nose here, then I want to go up and and down. Well, you know what? I would, I do not want to draw a monster sketch. Let's just get this uh, curve down for the nose. And I do want to try to keep my sketch a little bit small and work on the angles properly. And once you get the nose in, I want you adding the nostril, which is dark because it's the interior and the light is not getting in there. And then we've got a little bit of the canal for the rest of the nostril like this. And one thing about the colored pencil is you, you can't really get your sharp lines, especially if you're just using scrap pieces of paper, you know, and not the good quality paper, but <clears throat> forget about that. Okay, and then just pull that down a little bit into the lip. And let's just shade a smidge on the nostril. This is nice and damp and shiny um, where there is moisture on the tissue and it is uh, being reflected by the light. And I just want to very carefully start working around the nostril and the top of the nose and then we're moving on to the muzzle and for the muzzle we've we're starting to get um, fur here and we just want to get some density with the fur which is also curving a little bit away from the nose and we're just going to bring this little bit of shading down here like this and we got some darker underneath and this is the part of the lip so it's going to be really tough okay now let's move can you turn your page and just do this really put in a bit of a dark dark line there which is showing like the ridge where the hair is on the muzzle and let's just 
keep moving along the muzzle and then we've got a light patch here and we're going to start adding the shading for this fur right here and well, I just want to try working these both at the same time and if we um, don't have our length, if the length of the muzzle is not correct, by the time we do this, no matter, we'll go back, we'll lengthen the muzzle a little bit. Let's just put in a shade of color there. And there's this little strip of white. I'm kind of like not wanting to leave anything completely white because it'll um, it'll screw me up a little bit. I want to do this patch of shading, this one right here. It just is a little bit and it goes down toward the lip. So the the end of the muzzle does have quite a bit of of uh, white where the whiskers are and stuff. As as the doggy gets older, those whiskers that's the area that tends to get where all their gray hair comes in. Okay, is this patch of dark fur? This is this is dark because it is the curvature of the muzzle and this is curving around the top jaw and then we're just getting into tissue around the lips here okay that's enough I don't know now this patch of shading here takes us up toward the eye so let's just have this up more. Um, I want to back mine up a bit more as we work toward the eye. And then the shading at the top of the muzzle is getting into the curvature of the forehead. And then we've got a little bit. Well, let's just keep going with this. Let's just see what happens if we just keep going with this. Okay, so this is the dark fur under underneath the eye, and we've got that. This is the the um, canal for the tear duct. Okay, so wait a second. Wait a second. Don't make this too dark. Okay, I want to stay on this side. And then we've got the tear duct and we've got this up here. And then I want to go, this is around the forehead. And then I want to go into the fur on the eyebrow. And this is also the muscle, right? Around, around the eye and we'll just to keep ourselves oriented, we'll make this a little bit darker. And uh, just so that I know where I am. And then we'll carry this up along the head. I kind of want to turn my page, but um, because I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm going up too much, and I need to be going back. So let me just do this. I mean, it's more important that you guys see the reference photo, not what the heck I'm doing. Okay, so already I can tell that but it, that my muzzle doesn't look long enough, so I just, or I could just say that I'm having like a much smaller little sketch. Uh, and I just want to like take this up and uh, 
as we go here and then if that's the then there's the other eyebrow here and then back the flat part and this goes up and around but I'd like to see maybe maybe it's not gonna be too too screwed up Now, how about we try putting the eye in now? Because if we could do that, okay, so we've got, this is the fur um, between the eyebrows, and then we've got a light spot, and then we've got the eye. Super tricky. Rotate your pencil so that you can have like a sharper edge for doing this work and where I want to have the dot there and then we've got the top eyelid and comes to the back And then we've got a little bit of the, of the actual bow there. And then we've got a fairly dark iris that's large. And we're going to um, not worry about the different tones of the black and the blue and the iris. We're just going to uh leave a white a large white space where the light is reflecting off the curvature of the eyeball and then we've got And just try to darken this up a little bit just while we're here, right? Okay, I want to actually make this more defined right there for the, the depth. Okay, now let's go back to doing the muscle over the eye. And then we've got the, with the eyebrow here, and this muscle goes pretty close to the edge of the head. And we've got the other um, eyebrow. Right here. Okay, let's keep going up with our shading and then around the top of the eye a nice light hand top of the head or this this is more like the temple okay so we've got this this flat section here that goes up and then we've got bone that goes it changes angle so let's take this back. We're going to do this section in here and flatten that out. Make it pretty flat. Because if it's too flat, we can we can add height to it. This is too flat. Let's just I want to just take this up a little bit more. This is um I want to say the cranium. I'm I'm not too sure if that's the correct uh, anatomical name for this bone on top of the head. Let's take this up and then we put in 
quite a curve. I'm, I'm gonna, already I can tell I wanna make this higher. And then let's just drop this down. Okay, I don't wanna get too screwed up and too far away. Let's go back to doing the shading over the eye. I said that I was gonna move from, <laughs> from nose to the back of the head and then now I'm not. Okay, so we can we can darken this a little bit. I just wanna do this kind of like dark shading so that I know exactly where I am. All right, let's keep going. Put in the fur on the top of the head and we've got lots of curvature here around the eye and the eye socket and we've got some shading here because this is where the skull has curved and it's the side it's the temple here so let's put in a little bit darker shading there lighten it up and keep, you know, use a light hand, just get some color down and stuff. And now we want to go and have this fur here in front of the ear because we're curving off the top of the head down into the, the um, side of the head where the ear canal is. I'm going to have that a little bit darker. Aren't you glad I'm not making us do this with pen? <laughs> Holy moly. I, I, I think it would be like a seven hour video if I was making us do this with pen. Okay, so uh, it's, it's hard for me not to like, uh, okay, I'm just making excuses for myself, but it's hard for me not to like stop and look and think, oh my gosh, I'm so screwed up. Let's just uh, give ourselves a break and shade in the fur on his head. All right? Let's stop pissing around and get the job done. So this patch here is leading into the ear. This big bone right here is so um, distinct that we see we've got this nice strip where the light has caught it and then it's shaded more on the top as we head down the back of the head. Okay, now um, let's be brave. And if, if we've got this, okay. Now what we need to do is don't go too heavy, please. Because I'll tell ya, um, for, okay, secret revealed, when I'm wanting to walk you guys through something new like this that's complicated, I I do a practice sketch and um, I used to have to do a whole bunch of practice sketches before I had the courage to do a video. So now you know. That's the biggest secret in my whole life. So in my practice sketch with this, of course, like I tried the doggy a couple of times. Oh my God, did I totally ever bugger up the ear placement. So what I want you to do is not go super heavy with this dark spot right here because if you don't like where you have placed the ear and whatnot, as long as you don't have a lot of tone down on your paper, you're gonna be able to move it. Speaking from experience, 
when you put down like way too much color too fast in the wrong place um oh man you know what i'm kind of doing it again okay stop it let's let's do the top of the ear we've got some curvature around here this is the back of the head it comes in and this Okay, this should be like higher on mine. And this little white here, this is the hair that's standing up on this fur that has been caught by the light. So what we've just got a little bit of shading um, behind it on the back of his head. It's, yeah, this is totally going into the back of his head and down into the neck. And this is, also an angle that we can change later if we don't like it but right now i just want us to try and do a good job carefully okay so the ear has to be see you guys on mine i don't think it's forward enough in fact i know it isn't Let's just get some fur down. It's kind of growing in the, the nice, soft, fuzzy little ear that's growing in different directions. So we've got this and we want to do... See, the, the difficulty is, is that my eye is drawn to this dark patch here. So this is what I want to put on my sketch, but the position isn't right and if I push if I put this in first and it's wrong trust me everything is going to be screwed up so what I need to do is I want to just put down some very light um, markings for the fur on his ear And on the side of the head, if I work from the temple, from the temple back, and then under the the other side of the eye, we've got this little dark patch of fur here that is actually a little bit closer to the eye, and we can bring this down. So what I'm trying to do is just use different patches of shading in the reference photo to keep me oriented. And if I can move from something semi-recognizable to something else, then hopefully by the time I put everything down, I'm not gonna be, it, it won't be too, too, too screwed up. But gosh, we do have a lot to do. So it's just taking our time is important too. And this side part of the muzzle. I mean, what's it gonna be like later on when we're when I have us doing horses and great big horse heads and stuff like that? You guys are gonna scream. Okay, and then if we just, this patch of shading here, and then we're starting to get down into the tissue around the mouth. We can join this up, and then we've got the shading under the throat. Can you see how I'm avoiding the ear? Okay, and if we, okay, this is this patch here. Forward, and then we've got this very small line where we can see the lips. 
and you can tell how nervous I am about putting it in. That's enough of that. See the snout I think is too, obviously too short. Okay, well, okay, so if we've got this patch here, this is going up and we've got this dark patch here. I'm going to move over to doing this shading right underneath the ear. We've got a pretty sharp angle. And I know I'm, I'm going to need to change the neck. What I'm, what I'm doing now is all this dark um, fur that is the side of the neck and in shadow because of the angle of the photo as well as uh, the, the lighting. of the neck here. And I just want to stop, just stop at the shoulder. Okay, so if I go back to doing this, and then we've got a dark patch here, I just want to move from patch to patch and just get in, and there's different um, contours of the ear because it's nice and soft and floppy, so it's, uh, you know, bending and showing different degrees of uh, shading. Let's go this way and then this darker here and then darker here. You know, um, the like this is just so incredibly difficult for us. <laughs> what the hell was I thinking? But oh, so what's going through my mind right now is that if this were a bird, remember how I always say, oh, okay, so you know we've we've got uh, we're sketch down and it's so damn different from the reference photo that this is where we can actually ditch the reference photo and just finish the sketch off on our own because we're familiar with um the, you know the shapes and and all that kind of stuff well no not with a doggy because like we need the reference photo to to have all our shading around the muzzle and the curvature of the bone and the structure of the skull and everything like that so we need all that but gosh right now i just feel like i would love to ditch the reference photo and just try to fix this on my own but like I can't I can't because I don't know what the hell I'm doing so for any of you who do have little doggy woggies maybe you could um, uh, run away and fix your sketch and and you'll be all set to have something beautiful to put on your wall 
I gotta try to rescue this. Uh, he doesn't look like a little chicken or, or something. I don't know. Okay, and there is all this like white fur and whatnot on his throat and into the chest. So there, the um, you might not be able to tell from the reference photo, but this is all like fur and stuff like that in here. Muzzle is way too short on my sketch, you guys. Man. Okay, let's just start adding, you know, more pressure with our colored pencil and see if we can semi-rescue this. So that the sketch is like decent enough. Uh, what do I want to do here? This is where I'm totally screwed up. Okay, we've got the light for the ear, and this is uh, I don't know. I do. I think I'm I'm too screwed up trying to do this fold of the ear. It's not answering that, but I will have a look. Oh, neighbor. Phone her back. And then I want to do some darker. Yeah, my brain is not figuring this out, okay, at, uh, at all. But I do want to like pull this up a little bit, have this a bit darker. And all this. And I am going to try to fix the muzzle. Though I tell you, I'm a lot happier just like coloring the fur on the neck. <laughs> it's like a lot less uh, scary over here. Okay. be brave but I don't want to be brave okay and this let's just like back this up a little bit and do a bit more shading on the ear and then this is dark here and then the rest of the ear canal on this side which uh, can definitely darken. This goes in here. And then I've got darker shading on the side of the face. Okay, so let's just do some curving. over the head. And um, around the eye socket. Okay, make sure that's nice and, and dark. At least we can, you know, like bump up the features, right? Take this out a little bit more. Emphasize the curve a bit more and bring it around. And then we've got the eye socket on the other side. This kind of bumps up a little bit more. Okay, so it would be super great if I could somehow fix this muzzle without, um, might be too late. I want to like just add a bit more shading on the muzzle and then 
And then there's all the, the tissue around the mouth as well. It just So with a colored pencil, it only leaves shading on the paper when there's little bumps on the paper to capture the pigment from your pencil. This is why it's super important to practice with a light hand so that you don't squish all the little bumps in the paper because once you do that, it's not gonna pick up any more pigment from your pencil. Now he looks like a puppy, damn it. Gosh, damn it. Uh, the muzzle is probably too thick too, but let's just do a little bit more work on this. You know, I could make the, the muzzle would be longer if I made them move the nostril a little bit and the canal. Oh, let's just see what happens. Okay, you guys, I'm going to bump this out a little bit. And then his, uh, the lip, and we've got quite a few wobbles where the, but this is, this is a wedge, all right? We're going to go for a wedge shape. Don't, don't get too screwed up and too carried away and have it too, um, thick. If I add a little bit more shading around his, his muzzle and stuff. And then put in the whiskers. This is a doggy rescue mission, big time. Forget the mouth. I think it's in the wrong place anyway. I just want to add a little bit of Shading here. So th this tissue is like for like his throat and stuff, right? So it's got to be nice and loose, plus it's underneath. It's in shadow. So let's just make sure that that's a little bit dark. And then we've got this oh, this other fur that we can kind of see I mean, you know, from his chest. Now, um, <laughs> oh my God, comments are not welcome. Oh, I'm just teasing. Come on, we gotta be. You know, I'm like, I'm proud of us for tackling this. Are you kidding me? What a bunch of nut bars we are. Having the guts to do this. Bring this around. And then we gotta have like a, a little bit darker. It's what we we're trying to do is just get like the different folds in this ear to show that it's nice and soft and floppy. Now, when you push, okay, and we, it's true that we are just using scrap paper because what the heck, right? Um, and our scrap paper, which is poor quality, doesn't have a whole bunch of teeth to pick up lots of color from our colored pencil. So what happens is when we just keep working it like this and we're trying to get different tones, we are getting shiny, shiny um, sections on our paper, which is totally fine. 
Oh my god, shiny sections on our paper, is that... Are we gonna worry about that when we're... we got like so much else to worry about, I think? Okay, let's see the, the crane. I, I kind of like the front curve of mine. I like this front curve. Going to the back and around the back of the neck. I could just change that a little bit and then the, the ear should be out more. I'll bring this right and down. And okay, from this eyebrow, we've got like, it goes up flat on this flat. Okay. Um, well, he does not look anything like the reference photo. Uh, okay, darken his his eyebrow. That's one thing that we can do. Nice, fuzzy, dark, expressive little eyebrow. I think the eye that I did is kind of in the wrong position as well because it's um, it's too big and I feel it's too much this way. So no need to mention it in your comments. And the, the tear duct, and let's just give it a little bit of character. And Well, simply draw, right, you guys? Simply making a mess of things. Oh, come on, colored pencil, don't fail me now. Don't leave any darker dark marks than I than uh, I don't want. Okay, let's go back to just shading the muzzle. That'll make me feel good. Stay away from the end. The oh, because I added the length, the, then the nostril has to move, and the nostril canal isn't right, and blah blah blah. But let's just see. Did you have to lengthen the muzzle on yours, or is it kind of like okay? How does this lip? There's quite a quite an angle here. This is quite. Okay, I have this. I'm just going to put some gray at the top of his nose and then around around here. This is uh, this. I want to put maybe here more and a bit more shading around the nose and then underneath. This is kind of a sharp angle down and then we see the lip. Nothing like that. Uh, let's just put in some wobbles. This is like too complicated. And then this is gonna be for underneath the the bottom jaw and then getting into the throat and let's put some we've got to do this shading around his uh, the mouth right make this a little bit darker so the these uh, little bits of of shading where the fur is kind of like buckling and uh, and and it's a bit darker it's really this is the kind of stuff that's giving the contour to the muzzle and the side of the face that's what we need to do oh 
Okay, let's put in a few dark dots for the hair follicles on the muzzle. Let's just put in like a couple, you guys, and uh, so really d most of them are pretty small. And we can put in our, let's put in our black whiskers, <laughs> our white, white little whiskers, not many. Okay. Oh gosh. Well, see, I've pr I've pressed too hard here around the. But if I fix the ear, is he like? Okay, we're going for not horrible. We always go for not horrible. I don't know what what thing two is gonna say when he sees it. I'm gonna say, mommy, don't post the video. He's not good enough to show. This is the ear canal. We've got to get the ear canal here, and we've got to get the ear canal here, which has a fold, which I have not captured properly. Something to work on with our next sketch. In five years when I try doing a dog again. Okay, so just let's do do a little bit of difference in the shading here into the shoulder and then around. So, you know, like, okay, it's true that he looks like a puppy and not like the reference photo, but, you know. Let's show you the bloody disaster that I did yesterday when I was practicing this guy. Man. Okay. Uh, to be honest with you, I just want to keep working them. So what you can do, if you're still here, is the dark parts I want you to make darker, okay? That's what I want. I really want us to um, work on like the, the shading and bumping up the the contours and the contrast and stuff like that and here for the muzzle we've got the depth of the eye socket right and the way the fur curves on the muzzle and then we've got the cheek we've got the curvature of the temple around the eye Oop. and then more shading on the the muzzle and just keep working them a little bit he deserves it boy you know the mouth and the lips are very tricky do you notice that I haven't spent any time on them? Because it's very, there's lots going on with the tissue that's folding and blah, 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 and um, contours around the lips. But what we can do is just shade him really well underneath, you know, along the throat, okay? And at least we can give some depth there. By depth, I mean when we shade underneath his his throat, it just makes it look like the head is is uh, casting more of a um, a shadow, right? With his, I I'm afraid to ask how you're how the ear turned out for you guys because I'm sure it's a bazillion times better than mine but if I just try to 
focus. Now I've I've rotated the pencil in my hand just a little bit, so I'm getting kind of a sharper edge to do um, the shading. And this patch for the ear canal that I'd like to make darker. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make this any darker than it already is. But if you can work it, if you can work it on yours so that this is, there's really good sharp contrast between the ear canal and the rest of the head, that would be grand. So just see what you can manage there with that. And um, so I've, I've had this patch way too big. Just take this in a little bit. And then I just want to curve out the top of his head a bit, a bit more. Darken this and then we're coming off the top of the head. The skull is curving here, giving this nice white patch to show the curve of the skull. You guys are heroes for sticking with me. Okay, you know what? I think that this will do. This will do for now. I have no idea if there's going to be a playlist for dog sketches. After today, I'm thinking no. <laughs> But, uh, you know, first attempt. I mean, all we have to do is go back and look at the, the very first birds that I did. Holy macaroni. You know, this stuff doesn't come easy. And if it does, then hats off to you. Okay. So, uh, let's just say goodbye, shall we? Not goodbye. Until next time. That's what I want to say. So the thing is, I know I'm dicking around and stuff like that, but I can't post the uh, the thumbnail. Like anything that I, the way it's, it's uh, finished now is what the th thumbnail is going to be, right? Because I, I don't cheat and uh, and uh, keep working on this sketch, you know, in order to have um, a, a nice thumbnail. So I've got to uh, make sure that what I do, this is all buggered up. I don't know what that's going on here. Yeah, I definitely have to stop. Okay, can I darken this? Is this okay? This is too late, too late, too late. Okay, um, yeah, this is, gonna be it for our first doggy sketch and um, I am super proud of you for having the courage to keep me company for this let's do a bird next time I did not enjoy this <laughs> as much as, as maybe you did because I, I thought this was like a heck of a challenge. But you know, we're working on shading, uh, proportions, and uh, all this kind of good stuff. We're proving to ourselves we've got transferable skills, right? Everything that we practiced with the birds and, um, and whatnot. Look, look what we're able to do. My goodness, wouldn't have been able to do this last year. Okay, uh, shutting up now. I'd be happy to hear. 
and um, super, super duper grateful that you kept me company. And uh, I don't know what we're going to do next time. <laughs> it won't be a dog. Uh, okay, you guys rock. Thanks for your company. We'll see you next time.